Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. For the second day, rescue teams at the Pniewik mine are striving to reach seven miners and rescuers who are stuck underground after a methane explosion. So far, five workers are confirmed dead. One of them died in the hospital. President Andrzej Duda was at the scene today. The bravery of the rescuers who are below, who are fighting the elements at the moment, is immense. I've just seen the rescuers, including some of the team who were down there at the time of the explosion, and those rescuers are unharmed except for minor scratches. This is extraordinary bravery, extraordinary heroism, and extraordinary devotion to service for colleagues and for friends. I hope it'll be as the rescuers say, uh, that they will go down and get their colleagues out alive. We're praying for this. All is in the hands of Providence. The presence of the rescuers at the scene has been interrupted, and this is very correct uh, because they are in danger of losing their lives. Now the mines must be intensively ventilated so that there is less methane there and the temperature drops. Only then will rescuers be able to enter the area and look for injured people. To be able to do that, we need to build a system for supplying air to the area and be aware that all this is happening a thousand meters underground, where there is a risk of further explosions. It is the 57th day of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Irina Vereshchuk called for the urgent creation of a humanitarian corridor from the Azovstal plant in Mariupol. About 1,000 civilians and about 500 wounded soldiers remain there. Also, the Prime Minister of Denmark, Met Frederiksen, and the head of the Spanish government, Pedro Sanchez, visited Kiev today. In Severodonetsk, in the Luhansk region, Russian troops have destroyed all food warehouses, and the residents can only count on food products from humanitarian supplies. In the Kharkiv region, the occupiers are isolating the towns they occupy, are not allowing evacuations, and aren't letting volunteers in. Several volunteers were shot. Humanitarian aid from Ukraine is not allowed. The roads are mined, and you can leave only in the direction of the territory of the Russian Federation. In the Donetsk and Tauri directions, the enemy continues to fire at localities along the entire line of combat. In the occupied territories of Kyrgyzstan, the occupiers plan to organize a forced mobilization of the population for the war against Ukraine. The Russians also want to completely prevent the delivery of humanitarian aid from the Ukrainian side. Yesterday, it was agreed to evacuate civilians from the Azovstal metallurgical plant in Mariupol, but the Russian forces did not uphold the ceasefire. Only four buses with evacuated Mariupol residents managed to leave the city. Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Irina Vereshchuk announced that further attempts will be made in the near future. I can say with full responsibility that, unfortunately, not a single time has the relevant humanitarian corridor from Mariupol to Zaporizhia or any other Ukrainian city worked. We can only help a few people to leave, to save themselves. However, Vladimir Putin is not going to let this happen. We will block this area so tightly that a fly will not pass over it, offer all those who have not yet laid down their arms to do so. The Russian side guarantees them life and decent treatment on the basis of relevant international legal acts. We will provide professional medical assistance to all injured. In turn, an advisor to the president of Ukraine, Mikhailo Podolak, assured that Ukraine is ready for a special round of negotiations regarding the besieged city of Mariupol. Yes, without any conditions, we are ready for a special round of negotiations in Mariupol, one-on-one, -on -one, two for two, to save our boys, Azov, military, civilians, children, living and wounded, all of them, because it's ours, because they are in my heart, forever. Today, Kiev was visited by the Prime Minister of Denmark, Met Frederiksen, and the Prime Minister of Spain, Pedro Sanchez. During the meeting with the President of Ukraine, they discussed the current situation in war-torn Ukraine, announced further support for Ukrainians and the prosecution of war crimes and human rights violations committed by Russian troops. The Danish Prime Minister has announced that he will hand over another shipment of arms to Ukraine. Since the beginning of the invasion of Ukraine, Russia has already lost almost 21,000 soldiers, 172 planes, 829 tanks, and almost 400 artillery systems. Ukraine has conducted its sixth exchange of prisoners of war with Russia. 19 people returned home, including civilians and soldiers. Yesterday, the French closely followed the presidential debate with incumbent President Emmanuel Macron and his opponent, Marine Le Pen, ahead of the second round of elections scheduled for Sunday. The most 
Important topics, apart from the internal situations in France, include attitudes towards Russia, the war in Ukraine, and EU sanctions against Moscow, with particular emphasis on energy resources. Taking advantage of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, French President Emmanuel Macron reminded his opponent that she was financially dependent on Vladimir Putin. Vous ne parlez pas. You depend on Russian power. You depend on Mr. Putin. A few months after saying that, Madame Le Pen, you took out a loan from a Russian bank in 2015. First Czech Russian bank. Vous ni vos représentants ne sont là. Il sait pertinemment que je suis... He knows very well that I'm a completely free and independent woman. I defend France and the French because I'm a patriot and I've shown that all my life. During the presidential debate, uh, current economic issues irking French citizens were not absent from the discussion. Macron, Mr. Macron, I've heard you and your government rejoice at having raised purchasing power of the French. I've only heard French people talking about their purchasing power problems. I've only heard French people saying that they can't do it anymore, that they can't make ends meet. Seven out of ten French people consider that they've lost purchasing power in the last five years. I was looking at your program, your 22 policies. The word unemployment is not mentioned once. It's striking. It isn't a problem. It's a recognition of work well done in the past five years. I thank you for that. Marine Le Pen, known for her anti-immigrant views, is calling for a ban on the wearing of the hijab by Muslim women. Emmanuel Macron does not agree with this position. I want to ban the hijab in public spaces, I think, and say it as clearly as possible that such a veil is a uniform imposed by the Islamists. For me, hijab, kippah, or any religious symbol in public spaces should not be prohibited. The principle of equality is that if you follow this logic, you will forbid all religious symbols in the public space, not just the hijab. You have not read my proposal. No, but I have read the French Constitution. Forgive me, but the law you want to introduce, if you are elected, and I hope not, will have to be constitutional. French experts estimate that Marine Le Pen humbly assumed the pose of a schoolgirl and Emmanuel Macron as a teacher. Alors, Marine Le Pen, on... I had the impression that Marine Le Pen was intoxicated. She spoke slowly. She had the impression that her statements were shorter. Macron spoke much more because he covered more topics. She spoke slowly and very softly. It was as if the microphones were not positioned correctly. It was a strange feeling, but I think she wanted it and probably gained something because she could not be accused of being hysterical. But at the same time, as she lacked belligerence and determination. The debate was heavily commented on by the French on Sunday. I figured Marine Le Pen was a little nervous at first. Uh, Macron was very aggressive. And then they both calmed down uh, so we could listen to their programs in peace. I think the debate has cleared some points for many. The debate was boring and I would have liked a different confrontation. I think it would be more exciting if Macron were to meet Mélenchon and they only confirmed their views. Their positions remained unchanged and I already know who I will vote for on Sunday. I heard nothing new. I know we have to choose the lesser evil. The first polls after the debate show that Emmanuel Macron fared better. As many as 59% of respondents indicated the incumbent president. According to public opinion polls, uh, the favorite to win the election is the current host of the Elysee Palace. The second round will take place next Sunday, April 24th. And finally, Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom celebrated her 96th birthday today. She spent this in private in her country estate of Sandingham in the east of England. The only public celebration was a cannon salute and a happy birthday by the Royal Guard Orchestra. A gun salute took place in London's Hyde Park this afternoon to celebrate the 96th birthday of Queen Elizabeth, Britain's longest-serving monarch who celebrates a historic platinum jubilee this year. The Queen, who stepped back from most public duties this year over concerns about her health, traveled from Windsor Castle, west of London, to spend her birthday at her estate in Sandringham, Norfolk. Elizabeth became the Queen of Britain and more than a dozen other realms, including Canada, Australia and New Zealand, on the death of her father, King George VI, on February 6, 
1956, 1952, while she was in Kenya on an international tour. Elizabeth has largely avoided the public spotlight after spending a night in the hospital in October for an unspecified ailment and being ordered to rest. She tested positive for COVID-19 in February and has said she was left very tired. She has missed events, including the Remembrance Sunday gathering and Easter service, but she joined other members of her family and dignitaries at a memorial service for her husband, Prince Philip, at London's Westminster Abbey last month. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a great night.